Hello, this is Diego Apellaniz. In our last tutorial, we learned how to use ChatGPT to generate sophistic models by showing ChatGPT some examples and documentation about the programming language of sophistic CatImp. In this introductory tutorial to the API of OpenAI, we are going to automate this process so the user just needs to focus on their model or case study and our program automatically provides a ChatGPT with the necessary information to generate the sophistic code. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to set up the API of OpenAI. And for that, we need to come to this website, platform.openai.com. And well, if you are not able to see this uh, website yet, it is because you need to create your own account. So once you do that and you sign up, you should be able to see this uh, platform. And well, the reason you need to create your own account is because the API is not completely free, as we're going to see. But anyway, once you are here, what you're going to do is to come to your personal space and click on View API Keys. So here we are, and in this space, we can create our uh, API keys that we need to uh, use the API from our scripts or programs. And if you are not able to create your uh, keys yet, it is because you need to specify a payment method. <laughs> so for that, you should come to the billing uh, section here and into the payment method. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do that again. But just so you know, the, the pricing, in order to see the pricing, you can click here into pricing. And uh, once you scroll down, you can see that, for instance, for the ChatGPT 3.5, the, the standard ChatGPT model, let's say, you need to pay like uh, $0.002 per 1,000 tokens. And the tokens, they are related to the uh, length of the, of the prompts that we send to ChatGPT and the length of the answers that we receive from, from it. But basically, this is a very low amount of money. So in case you are interested, my billing history, well, I have another account for, for the office. But in this case, uh, well, you are probably not going to spend more than a few uh, dollars per month. So it's not that bad. But anyway, if you are more interested uh, regarding what tokens are, you can come to this other website, platform.openai.com slash tokenizer. And here they basically translate sentences into tokens so let's start with an example so for instance the uh, sentence that butterfly is beautiful it is translated into four tokens that butterfly is beautiful you can also translate code into tokens because uh, we usually uh, want to generate code with ChatGPT. So in this case, I've just pasted this uh, loop with Python, and here you can see how the um, the tokens they don't necessarily relate to complete words, right? So in this case, it could be 41 tokens, or they say that if you the, if they use this codex model, uh, that it's more efficient and so on and so forth, it's 39 tokens. So uh, basically the same. That were the tokens. Once you have specified your payment method here, of course, you can come back to the API key section and you need to generate your API key that you will need to uh, for, for your scripts later on. So for that, you need to click into create new secret key. And in this case, I'm going to name it like a sophistic tutorial and then create secret key. And now it is important that you save it because you are not going to see this uh, complete key anymore. <laughs> so we basically copy it and I'm saving it just here okay, because we will use it later on. Okay, so now done. And of course, it's very important that you don't share your key with anyone because otherwise you will be charged by <laughs> uh, depending how much the other people use your your Key, right okay so now we have generated our api key and we are ready to start using it in our script so in order to see how we can do it <laughs> we can come to this section api reference and here well they basically explain how this uh, api works and they say that uh, it works through http requests that uh, can be used by any programming language so here they basically explain how this uh, http requests work but of course, you are not going to be using directly this uh, API documentation based on HTTP requests. But what uh, you are going to do, of course, 
is to use another library or bindings that translates uh, translate this request into a certain programming language. In this case, we are going to be using the official Python bindings. So in order to see how to use the API of OpenAI with Python, I strongly recommend to come to this uh, GitHub repository. So github.com uh, slash OpenAI slash OpenAI cookbook. And here um, you can see some uh, guides and examples. And to start with, we are going to follow a certain tutorial. So you will need to come to the examples folder. And then here, uh, there is a, an example related to uh, how to format inputs to ChatGPT models. And this is the tutorial that we are going to follow to start with. So what we're going to do is to follow this introductory example by uh, replicating that code in Visual Studio for, uh, let's say, our personal purpose. So this is not a sophisticated tutorial yet. This is just an, a very uh, starting introduction, how to use the API of OpenAI. So I have Visual Studio code here, and I have created my own folder for this project. So the first thing you need to do is to create a Python file. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, fin.python. Uh, the first step that they specify here is to import the OpenAI library. And of course, for that, you need to install that package. So, and before starting a package, we strongly recommend to create a virtual environment. So for that, you should be able to go to view, command palette, and Python, create environment, a virtual environment. And I'm going to go for uh, Python 3.10. The last version is 3.11, but I strongly recommend not to <laughs> use the last uh, Python version because uh, some packages are not going to be compatible with that. So now I am creating my uh, virtual environment with Python 3.10. Okay, and now uh, once the environment is created, we should be able to open a new terminal. And in this terminal, we can see that the virtual environment is active. And now we can finally copy this command to install the uh, packets OpenAI. And okay, everything was successfully installed. Great. So the next thing we need to do is to import OpenAI. And they don't specify it here, <laughs> but there is an important step here, which is to specify your API key, of course. And one of the ways you can do that is to go to do openai.api key. And you can basically hard code it this way. So just copy and paste. Of course, you need to specify your own key here, because I'm going to delete this one <laughs> just after recording this tutorial. And also, there are another more sophisticated ways to uh, write down your API key. So you can import it from a file instead of uh, hard coding it right here. But anyway, we can uh, move forward. And then they explain how to make an example chat API call. And for that, the first thing that you need to do is to specify the uh, GPT model that you are going to use. The standard one is uh, ChatGPT 3.5. And of course, the model has an influence in the pricing and also in the kind of response that you're going to get. The GPT 3.5 is not as advanced as GPT 4, but it's faster and it's a bit cheaper. So for, the, for this first example, that's the one that we're going to use. And then you have to specify the messages. So of course, you can send an isolated message to ChatGPT, but to get the most out of it, you typically want to achieve this kind of conversational behavior, right? So ChatGPT remembers your previous messages. And for that, you are sending not just one message, but a whole conversation of uh, messages up till uh, that particular point. And a conversation is basically a list of messages, as you can see here. And each message is uh, a dictionary, as you can see here. And the first uh, key of the dictionary is the role. So for uh, each message, there can be three different roles, system, user, or assistant. And system, this is typically just a parent message, which is a general instruction to ChatGPT. Then user, those are the messages that are your prompt that you are uh, sending to uh, ChatGPT. And finally, assistant are the messages that you are getting back from ChatGPT. And well, once you get the response from ChatGPT, basically to read the message, <laughs> because the uh, response is uh, it's created as a JSON file. So to get the uh, message, which uh, would be 
this one, right? Because this is a kind of joke. Uh, you are saying, okay, you, the, the first instruction is you are a helpful assistant. You can see system here. And then you ask knock, knock. That's the user message. Then the response could be who's there. And then your next message is uh, orange. So then ChatGPT would go on with the typical answer to that joke, orange who? <laughs> so anyway, to uh, get that content, you basically need to do it this way, right? Response, then choices, because that's the particular key. And you can see that choices is a list. So we need to get the first item and then message and then content. Okay, so that was nice. And now I'm going, we are going to do our own example. And for that, let's uh, first start initializing our conversation, right? Because what we want to do is to go on having a conversation, not just get one message back. So this is going to be our empty list to initialize the conversation. And the first message in this conversation, we are not going to send it to ChatGPT just right now, because this is just the, the system message to explain, to explain what ChatGPT is supposed to do. And in this particular example, <laughs> you are go I'm going to say, in, uh, I'm saying here, okay, so you are a young cat by the name of Finn. So that's the reason why I named the Python file that way, because Finn is also my cat, full of energy that likes to chase, to chase her, her ties and spends most of his day laying in the sun. Talk like that cat could do if he could. Okay, so that's the general instruction. Then we need to specify the uh, GPT model. In this case, we are going to go with the standard GPT 3.5 because again, it's uh, cheaper and faster than GPT 4. Maybe it's not as good, but, but for this uh, first example, why not? And well, finally, what we need to do, of course, is to define the conversation loop. And that's not explained in this example, but I've uh, just prepared this. So while true, which means that the conversation can go on and go on as long as you want. And to exit that, you will just need to hit uh, Control C in your keyboard. So first, after this message, of course, the user should uh, specify a prompt or message. Then this message is appended to the conversation. And then the uh, last state of the conversation is sent to ChatGPT. And then you get the answer back from ChatGPT and it is displayed in the console here and it is append to the conversation. And then the uh, loop starts again and again and again. So that's, and of course you can see that the conversation that we are sending to ChatGPT is the, the current state, right? With all the messages that we have exchanged up till this point, till that point. And well, I didn't, I didn't explain that, but there is this interesting parameter here, temperature. So temperature, it, it is related to the randomness of the answers that we get from ChatGPT. So a temperature of zero would mean that we are always going to get the same answer from ChatGPT if we send the same prompt. But if we specify a temperature of one, which would be the maximum value, that would mean that each time we are getting a different answer from ChatGPT. <laughs> it depends what you want to do. Typically, if you are doing something very specific at the office, you want to use zero, right? So both users, uh, all users get the same answer. So and that's it. And I guess we can basically save it and test it. So just save. And we are in our terminal here. So we can just type in um, Python and then um, fin dot Python and uh, okay so now it's working so apparently we have already sent the first system message to ChatGPT to explain that it is supposed to act as a cat or my cat <laughs> and then we're gonna start uh, talking to ChatGPT so uh, hey fin I'm back home how was your day? And then it takes a couple of seconds. And now we get here the answer. Meow, hi there. <laughs> My day was awesome. So we can see that it's talking like a cat. I spent most of it longing in the sun, chasing her thighs and so on and so forth. I also had a delicious meal and some treats. How was your day? Did you bring uh, me any new toys to play with? Um, my day was fine. I had fun at work. I ate a salad. 
but I guess you wouldn't have enjoyed it, right? And then let's see what uh, <laughs> my cat answers, if he likes salad or not. And yeah, I'm glad to hear that you had a, a good day. As for the salad, I'm not really a fan of veggies. I prefer meat and fish, but I'm sure it was tasty for you. Did you bring me any treats of toys? And uh, let's see. Uh... Okay, so now that uh, we know how to use the API of OpenAI, let's move on to Sophistic finally. And basically, this was the conversation that I had with ChatGPT uh, in our last tutorial. By some reason, it says model uh, GPT 3.5, but if you remember, the model that we used was ChatGPT uh, 4. So if you are using uh, 3.5, you are maybe getting some answers uh, not as good as uh, mine ones, but just keep that in mind. So um, basically, this was the conversation. And if you remember, uh, it started with a, with a very uh, general introduction of uh, what we want ChatGPT to do. So he's a code assistant. And then we explained our particular example and we explained how Sophistic works and it's broken down into different modules and uh, how the syntax works. And basically, then we jumped into the actual uh, Sophistic model into our uh, case study. And in each section, we could basically describe uh, what we want ChatGPT to generate. And for that, we could specify an, uh, the, the necessary syntax from the, the from from the for the cat in programming language, from the Sophistic uh, documentation files, right? And an example of Aqua or the particular uh, module, right? And this is what we want to automate. So uh, I have in word the, that same conversation, but in uh, in black, those are the basically the the examples and the syntax of Sophistic. And in red, that's the part that it is related to our particular model or case study. So what we want to do, the goal of this tutorial, is that the user, or in this case us, just need to write these uh, red text uh, sections. And our program automatically automates the sending of examples and uh, syntax documentation to ChatGPT. Okay, so this is my finished code, right? So that we don't spend uh, too much time in writing it from scratch. And as you can see, it is it has basically the same logic as our uh, first tutorial, right? We have we can see this conversation loop here, but uh, let's go step by step. So the first additional thing that I'm doing is to import my Sophistic prompts into my uh, main module, right? My Sophistic bot uh, Python module. And these prompts are defined in another module, right? This is where I define the, the syntax and the examples of uh, the Sophisticat imp, so that I don't need to deal with that anymore from my, my, my prompt. And uh, actually, these uh, templates are not directly defined into the Python module, but are saved, are saved as text files. So you can see this folder here are templates. And for instance, uh, the first one would be introduction. And here I'm saying, okay, I want you to help me as a code assistant and so on and so forth. And then if you remember, the next thing that we specified was a general description of our model. That is going to come here, placeholder. So in this uh, placeholder variable between the curly brackets will be replaced by our model description later on. And of course, then this is the how Sophistic works. And then we can go into, into Aqua and it basically works the same. This is the Sophistic template with both the necessary syntax and uh, examples. And this placeholder uh, contains the information of my particular model or case study regarding to Aqua that I have to specify later on from the uh, console. And the same thing from uh, for Sophimes A to define the Sophistic geometry and for Sophilode. Okay, so uh, this is the placeholder, of course. So once you have your uh, templates defined here, and I will share this, this code in the description of the video, so don't worry about that. So let's get back to our prompts file. So the thing is that, um, of course, and to and I have defined this function here to read in those uh, text files, that's very easy. So the thing is that once this module is imported from my uh, main Sophistic bot uh, Python file, 
then uh, these variables are going to be uh, populated, right? Or because they are going to read in those particular files. And the reason is that, uh, well, the now the, <laughs> the next question is, okay, but when, when I see a particular message or a particular prompt to ChatGPT, how does my program know if I want to use a particular template for that? So uh, for that reason, I define this function here and I just came up with this idea, but you can uh, decide your own approach, of course. So the idea is that the template keyword shall, uh, shall be specified at the beginning of the prompt with a semicolon. So uh, for instance, if we say uh, aqua, then a semicolon and then a certain prompt, then the program is going to know, okay, I have to use this aqua template. Because of course, from the same conversation, we are going to use different templates or there are even some prompts that we are going to send without any template at all. So that, that's what the, the approach that we are using to identify a specific template. And the, the keywords are specified in this dictionary. So if we start our message with a particular keyword, then uh, our program is going to use that particular template that is read from that particular text file. <laughs> okay, I hope that was uh, more or less clear. So this is how our templates work. And then we go back to uh, Sophistic. Um, so we go back to, to our main uh, Sophistic script. And then, uh, well, the first thing that I'm doing is to use um, ChatGPT4 instead of ChatGPT 3.5. But in order to use ChatGPT4, you have to join a particular waitlist. So you can do that. And it takes like uh, three weeks more or less. So until uh, you get access to ChatGPT4 from the API. You can. Uh, it's up to you to use uh, ChatGPT 3.5, but in that case, in that case, you uh, may need to uh, to post-process the answers from uh, ChatGPT a bit more than than uh, in my case, because they might not be as precise as uh, mine. Okay, so then we jump into this conversation loop, and the first thing we have to do is to define a, a, the, the the system instruction. So we say here, if the conversation has not started yet, uh, this is the first message that we are sending. And this is the, with the role uh, system, right? Because that's the general instruction. And in this case, uh, I'm an uh, artificial intelligent bot that will help you define your sophistic model. Please give a general instruction and description of the model to begin with. But that's not the, that's not the instruction. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the message that we are getting to send the instruction. So we, we should then uh, defi uh, specify the instruction in the, in the, in the console. And then uh, it reads the instruction. It processes the prompt to use that particular template. And it appends that message to our empty conversation. So that's the first message, just the, just the system instruction. And then uh, it says, OK, now you can uh, continue defining the different models of the Sophistic model. But it is important that you know that these first two messages, they don't come from ChatGPT. They come just from our program so that the user uh, knows how, how to use it, right? And also, you can see that this sy syntax is a bit, uh, let's say, um, different because we are printing those messages in blue so that we know that they come from our boat later on in the conversation. OK, so once this first message is specified, then we can go on uh, talking with ChatGPT and defining our sophisticated model as we can see here. So then we would need to specify a different prompt. And the program processes this prompt to check if it uh, needs to use a particular template. And it appends that message to the conversation. And it sends the last state of the conversation to ChatGPT. Then it reads the answer, the response. It prints the response, it appends the response to the conversation, and then the loop starts again. <laughs> so we can go on talking with Sophistic again and again and again. OK, so now we have our code completed. And finally, we are going to test it. <laughs> so for that, we are going to use the console of Visual Studio. Again, if you cannot see this terminal here, what you have to go is to go to Terminal, New Terminal. And uh, furthermore, what we're going to do is to click on this arrow to maximize our panel size. So I hope that this is more comfortable. And then we just need to launch our Python script. So let's go for it. Then we just type in 
Python and then the name of our Python file. In this case, it is uh, sophistic underscore bot dot Python. And then you, uh, you can see that we are getting this first message in blue because it comes from uh, our bot. And well, actually, if you remember, this is the automated message. So this doesn't come from ChatGPT yet. And it says, I'm an artificial intelligent bot and so on and so forth. Please give me a general instruction and a description of the model to begin with. What we want to do is to use our template introduction in which we explain the ChatGPT, how Sophistic works and so on and so forth. And we also give a rough explanation what the uh, how the model looks like, right? That uh, we want to generate. So that could be it. I start with intro because that was the keyword. So my program knows that it needs to use this template and without uh, any space here. And then I go on uh, defining my um, my model. So then I click enter and the whole message has been appended to the conversation, but not just this message, but this message with the template as well. And then it says, OK, now you can continue defining the different modules of the Sophistic model. And of course, it is again the last automatic message from our program. It doesn't come from ChatGPT yet. And let's start with Aqua. So I start with the uh, Aqua and then a semicolon because I want to use this template. And I say I want to create a model based on the code and so on and so forth. And this is the concrete quality and reinforcement and steel material of quality B500A. And then we hit enter. And we have to wait maybe some seconds until we get the response from uh, ChatGPT. OK, so here is our response. And uh, we can see how it generates this uh, code for Aqua. And uh, it looks it's right. It, it looks like everything is right, but let's uh, copy it into Teddy, of course. And uh, it seems like every keyword has been recognized and everything looks fine. So let's just do a let's save it and let's do a test calculation. And OK, everything works so far. And, and now we can move on to the next model, which could be Sophimus A to define our model geometry. So let's get back to our terminal. And we copy the next uh, prompt, right? And in this case, uh, we start with the keyword uh, Sophimus A because I want to use that template. And then in this case, what we are going to do is to define a C-shaped slab of uh, 8 meters width, which is uh, 30 centimeters thick. So the whole system is, uh, well, it is like a, like a C, right? And this is what I'm explaining. And then there is a column grid, which is translated into point supports every eight meters in both X and Y directions. And if you remember from my previous tutorial, it is very important that uh, we write down the axis comment, the, uh, the node axis in a comment next to the node definition, so that later on in the later messages, we can refer to a particular, to the model geometry, just by specifying a certain axis, right? And that's what I'm saying. And uh, well, then I just specify that the boundary of our c shaped slab is then defined by this particular node. Well, in theory, maybe with ChatGPT 5, <laughs> that, that couldn't be necessary, right? Because if I say that my slab uh, has like a C, a C shape and, and with these dimensions and so on and so forth, it should understand that. But in this case, that was necessary. Also, when we will be able to um, provide images to ChatGPT, these additional explanations may not be necessary as well. But um, so far, they are. OK, so we are getting back the answer from ChatGPT regarding our Sophimus A module. And we can basically copy it and paste it, paste it into our uh, Teddy editor. So again, all keywords uh, look nice. And we can just uh, save this file and calculate it. And uh, no error so far, so let's take a look at the system. And uh, yay, perfect. <laughs> we can see here our C-shaped uh, slab system with uh, point supports. It's um, every eight meters. So that was uh, fine. That was great. And you can see how this this dialog is uh, is really very intuitive. And we are just specifying uh, data regarding to our model, and we are getting the answer from ChatGPT back. So this is as straightforward as it gets. And uh, also, what we are going to do is to see, OK, this, uh, this looks nice, but uh, this mesh um, size, it's, it has like one meter. And we want to, to um, edit that. We want to make it like 
uh, 0 0.8 but the thing is that well of course we could have uh, decided that before ascending our prompt but the thing is that we want to change our uh, sophistic code which might be the case right because ChatGPT doesn't uh, send uh, perfect answers always then we need to uh, let ChatGPT know about that and that's what I'm doing right here by the way I have updated the uh, mess uh, size by changing this uh, line to uh, 0 0.8. You don't need to update the uh, SophieMaze file just yet. And the reason for doing that is that for the next time that he updates uh, this SophieMaze file, then it takes into account this change and we don't lose it. And now our first, and of course, in this case, we are not uh, using any template, right? This is a message that doesn't require any template so that ChatGPT understands it because ChatGPT remembers the previous messages of our conversation. So let's move on. That was our, this is our current model so far. And now what we're going to do is to model uh, to a small concrete score here uh, in this uh, ends of our um, slab system which will be right and open with uh, line supports along this uh, core perimeter. So let's define just that. And that's what I'm specifying here. Now we're going to add two concrete cores, update the surface mesh module and add uh, those openings in, in these uh, locations. And I'm referring to the node, uh, to the grid nodes again, because I, because we, defined because ChatGPT defined them as, as comment here. And that's the, the only reason why I'm, I am able to uh, refer to the model coordinates by the uh, grid nodes and then add four line supports with uh, uh, connecting the corners and so on and so forth. And in this case, we don't need to use a template. And why is that? Because we already sent the template when we first uh, sent our uh, first SophieMess a prompt. So I'm just sending this uh, last message without any template. Okay, so now we have our answer here from ChatGPT. And by the way, uh, and this last line of uh, my prompt is very important <laughs> because I'm saying here, write only the changes of the SophieMess a file and don't write the remaining content, and sorry, and write the remaining content, so the unmodified sections, as generic comments. And this is very important, first, so the response is faster, and second, so that it doesn't hit the, the uh, response maximum length, and I can get all the information that I need. So uh, let's take a look. So first, we are defining the um, geometric definition of my opening nodes. So let me paste it here, right below the, uh, the other nodes of my model. And then we need the boundary definition for the openings, which should be here under the uh, outer boundary. And finally, we need our align support. So those should come here. And again, let's uh, test our current uh, model. And no error so far. Let's take a look at the system. And yay, <laughs> we can see this is our uh, slab system. And we have these uh, two openings with the line supports, which represent the concrete cores of that uh, building. So this is my model geometry so far. And of course, this is a simplified model. But anyway, let's move on to the next uh, Sophistic module, which is uh, Sophie load for the uh, load definitions. And for that, I'm starting my prompt with the SophieLoad keyword. So I sent not just this prompt, but also the corresponding template with the Sophistic syntax and examples. And I'm saying here, okay, define the self-weight of the structure with an a permanent load of uh, 2.5 kilonewtons uh, square meter applied to all elements of the model. And then I want a single life load case with two rectangular loads. The first one is applied between uh, axis A and B, and the second one between axis uh, B and C, with values of 503 kilonewton square meters, respectively. And those are not the uh, all the loads that I want to apply. I also want to apply a line load along the, the um, slab perimeter. But uh, as we have already said several times, it is very important to break down complex instructions into different prompts so ChatGPT understands them correctly. So let's start with uh, these loads. And here we have our response from ChatGPT regarding the SophieLoad module. So 
let's just copy it again everything looks good i also know that everything is okay because i already tested it before <laughs> but basically we have our uh, first slot case with the self-weight definition our permanent load and then we have this uh, live load case with our two rectangular uh, loads here well actually i was saying that uh, you have to define one unique live load case and and it created two additional load cases but yeah that's that's okay that's a simple mistake and before testing it we are going to add the last uh, line load to our model and let's copy it here so i'm saying okay apply a line load of uh, 10 kilonewton meters representing the facade in another load load case along uh, the outer boundary for the entire slab okay so uh, then this is the response from uh, chat gpt and uh, again before copying it into Teddy, just two very important remarks regarding my um, my prompt first i must specify to write only the changes of the sophie load uh, sophie load file and not the previous um the, the previous lines that are not affected by this line load right so that it's uh, the response comes faster and uh, we don't hit the, the maximum length right because you can see that the response is, is quite quite long and also and very important i'm saying here write as a comment the notes that each line load connects the reason for that is that i wasn't getting a uh, good results right specifying that because the line load was not following the actual um, slab boundary but it was just following let's say a, a, a rectangle <laughs> not a c-shape but if you when you have problems with chat gpt a very important tip is that if you ask chat gpt to reason their answer its answer then it, it's going to achieve a much more a much better um, result so anyway we can just uh, copy this uh, additional this new line loads which could be probably up from here and i hope everything is right and this could be the end of the sophie load file and also we are going to add just uh, the last module i'm just copying it which is uh, just for for uh, starting the uh, simple um calculation so let's save my file and let's start the calculation and everything looks right i'm getting a warning for the loads right because i have applied some loads into some openings <laughs> but uh, that's okay for us we can see my load cases and the deformation so everything everything looks uh fine so far and uh then if we also uh take a look into the into the graphic module if we take a look into the graphic module so we can probably see that let's put this on 3d this is my system everything looks nice let's take a look into the loads or loads so that was the permanent load and we can see my uh, variable load right with different values and it's applied into these empty spaces but uh, that's okay <laughs> and also my line load that actually follows the uh, perimeter the outer perimeter of the slab so uh, that was basically the tutorial and you can see how we can have a very intuitive conversation with ChatGPT by defining a very simple code right in just 29 sorry in just uh, 38 lines we have defined in this bot and uh, we can see how this conversation is very intuitive we just uh, write down the information of our sophistic models and we get the answers in the cut in from ChatGPT. so i think that was a successful implementation or automation of the creation of sophistic models the only drawback is that the answer from ChatGPT 4 take a couple of uh, seconds to to um, get back to us but i'm sure that these response times will get improved in the future so that was it and uh, thank you for your patience and see you in further tutorials.